think the majority of my practice is female based, which is really a market pressure in that only 10% of practicing urologists are females. So a lot of female patients are going to seek me out and my other friends in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Thankfully, we're all friends and they're all wonderful. So wherever you end up for care in this area, you're in good shape. Most of us are going to see a big proportion of patients who have voiding dysfunction. These are our friends who either toilet too frequently or leak when they do not want to leak. In general, there are two big types of incontinence. There's urge incontinence, which is that I have to go, I know where every bathroom is, and I don't sleep through the night. 40% of people, probably at about the age of 40, have some touch of that. And we can treat that from all the way from some behavior modifications and tinkering with a few things you do up to a medication. If you don't respond to medication, there are some more advanced interventions that can be undertaken, but most people are going to do pretty well with medicine and behavior modification. Separately, there is stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is different. That is when you leak, when you cough, laugh, sneeze, jump, run. Those are our friends who can't go cheer on their kiddos at soccer games, don't wanna do the trampoline anymore, and worry about having embarrassing urine loss with some sort of activity. For people who have just a touch of that, we have some exercises and some recommendations, and that's great, but a lot of these friends are gonna fall into the area of needing a surgery. Thankfully, there's a couple of different options, and some of the things that we do most frequently are very quick day surgeries that get us very nice results in fairly fast fashion. For some of our friends who aren't good surgical candidates and maybe a little bit older, what you can do is bulk up that urethra. The urethra is the little tube through which the urine comes out. So for some of our friends, they just don't have a backstop there. It just, there's just total efflux. So what we can do, kind of like we some our plastic surgery fans might make some lips real poofy and beautiful, we can make your urethra poofy. So basically what that does is it takes a, if you think about a pipe, what we've done is we squeeze down the diameter of that pipe so that less urine will come out. That's nice, minimally invasive. Some people do that in the office, very well tolerated. Things to know about that is it probably has to be repeated, things of that nature, but a fantastic choice for some of our friends. For some younger folks or people who are willing to do a more significant surgery, there's something called the mid-urethral sling. That is where a little piece of mesh, just a, a little strip is used under the urethra so that when people cough, laugh, or sneeze, that little material acts as a backstop and they don't leak. That's a day procedure. It is a reasonable choice if between you and your doctor, y'all discuss the risk and benefit and you feel comfortable with that. I think something we see a lot these days is recurrent urinary tract infections. I think we're all living longer, we're living our best lives later, and some things just simply change and predispose us to urinary tract infections. I think that's something that people might need to make it to me sooner, because I think that it's so difficult to enjoy your life when you just don't feel well multiple times a year. So there are tricks to reduce your risk of recurrent infection, and we can address that, as well as making sure there's not an underlying predisposing issue. So blood in the urine's a problem. No one should ignore that. They'll get that started as an evaluation with their primary care, and if that's just from a UTI, that's fine. They'll work through that and prove that it all resolves. Anything other than that is going to require a urologist, because we've gotta make sure you don't have kidney cancer, bladder cancer, kidney stone, or something of that nature. So if you have blood in the urine, let's make sure you raise your hand and get in front of your provider.